Often when you talk about disaster risk reduction or the picture that comes to the mind of people when they hear about disasters, they think about the disaster as an event and the response to that disaster. In fact, however, what we need to realize is that fundamentally, disaster risk reduction is a development issue. Over the last 20 years, we've lost about $2 trillion to disasters in terms of direct economic losses. About 4 billion people have been affected cumulatively and often the disaster throws people back into poverty. We need to understand that disasters happen not because there is natural hazard, but because we have had development decisions that did not take the disaster risk into account. By being able right now to have early warning systems in place and doing preparedness well, they were able to save many, many lives that in the past we've not been able to save. By having deliberately more risk information accessible to communities so that decisions are being made at the local level in terms of small infrastructure, in terms of education and preparedness issues, etc., having direct impact on the way communities deal with underlying risk factors. By focusing in the new agreement on governance processes, as opposed to setting up the laws and institutions, we are able to reduce the risk fundamentally. We have a number of countries that have good building codes, they are not respected by now focusing on the issues to make sure that building codes are actually enforced and therefore buildings will not crumble in an earthquake will allow us to save a lot of future losses in terms of lives or infrastructure. By fully integrating recovery now into the framework and allowing us to focus not just on rebuilding main infrastructure but also looking at the social cohesion issues in communities, looking at how micro and small businesses and enterprises are rebuilding who often have a problem of accessing actually resources or the know-how to rebuild back better. And by making the recovery effort as much community driven as possible, as opposed to externally driven, is something that will make a direct impact on the communities as they rebuild their lives. Sendai, the financing for development discussion, the SDGs, the climate discussions are connected because simply put, disaster issues are a development issue and a lot of disasters, as we know, are climate related. And the issue of how we finance and invest in risk reduction and resilience, how we prepare for events that will be more frequent and intense in the future, how we safeguard development from these events, are connected throughout all these processes. And we have to come up with a global answer to what truly is a global problem by making sure that the development community can support other countries, both in terms of technical support, but also by providing the right financing mechanisms to address the underlying risk factors to development. And for that particular reason, all of these processes have to be seen as actually part of the same kind of overall ambition that we have set ourselves for this year. Often we're being asked, why is UNDP engaged in disaster risk reduction? It is a fundamental development issue and therefore it is not unsurprising that we have been the primary, both by mandate as well as actually by program volume, multilateral partner to program countries, to our member states over the last 10 to 15 years. We have nearly expended $2 billion in over 150 countries to support them across the board on addressing disaster issues. This can go from the initial fundamental preparedness activities to more in-depth governance processes, setting up of legal frameworks institutions, to recovery processes, investing in preparedness for recovery and so on. Going forward and with UNDP's new strategic plan where we have elevated the issue of risk, including disaster and climate risk, at the highest level ever in the history of our organization, we expect that actually our engagement on uh, ensuring that development is safeguarded from this risk will only increase. Going into Sendai, we have a delegation that is being led by the administrator herself. We have done a number of activities and preparations to contribute to the success of that conference that includes the agreement itself as well as sharing the lessons we have learned over the last 10 years in the work we have done. And moving forward, we are developing a new comprehensive program and seeking partnerships uh, that will allow us to continue being a main partner of uh, our program countries. One thing we've learned fundamentally in disaster risk reduction, because it's not a sector by itself, it's something that cuts across everything we do in development, we need to have a partnership approach that supports nationally driven processes, and we will be ready for that. We need to move to an area, and this is why post-2015 is so exciting for us, where we ensure that all development is risk-informed. If it's not risk-informed, it's simply not sustainable.